I had somebody comment on one of our videos recently. If I if we don't get Williams or Marvin Harrison Jr., I'm gonna be pissed. And you know what? I started thinking about it, and that's actually kind of a possibility because if you don't want Williams, right? That's fine. You're the first pick overall. I still expect there to be stories about them being unsure on fields just to sit there and raise the leverage, just like they did last year. There's no threat of you taking Caleb Williams. Then teams are going to call your bluff and not want to really, you know, the teams close to you are not going to be willing to trade up to you. If you want Marvin Harrison Jr., you said this in a previous video. You're like, I almost wish the Bears would just get the second overall pick to make it easy on them. Okay, so if you trade out a one, does Marvin Harrison Jr. go number two? Not necessarily. He might. Probably Drake he, May still. Maybe. So that's what you'd have to hope for. And if it is, you could. You're really only looking to trade back to three. Like you, you, he's not going to fall like Jalen Carter fell, right? He's not. He's no. going to go high in this draft. So that actually limits the amount of teams that you'd be willing to trade with. Whereas last year, you were willing to drop back all the way to pick nine. This year, I don't think – I mean, listen, if you want the three first picks, you got to drop back kind of far. The, the teams that give up a haul are trading up seven, eight spots or more. And if you do that, I don't think you're in a position where you land Marvin Harrison Jr. I disagree only in the sense that because of last year's quarterback class, it takes an owner like David Tepper, right? And I don't know if you've been following David Tepper, but like – the owner of the Carolina Panthers. I mean, he literally threw a cocktail at a fan at a Jaguars game <laughs> last game. He got fined three hundred thousand dollars by the NFL. It takes a it takes an owner like David Tepper, right, to just say, you know what, do it. I don't care. There's there's a few layers to the point you're making. Caleb Williams this year is to somebody, and I wouldn't say to somebody to multiple teams. I'd say there's probably three or four teams in my head that, depending on situation, you could argue they would trade the farm. Patriots, depending on how Robert Kraft views it, Robert Kraft also had Tom Brady. Six-round pick, right? He could believe that six-round picks are capable of being, like, generational players, and Bill Belichick is sticking around, and however that works out. You have the Washington Commanders, who just went under new ownership. And the owner of the Washington Commanders, he wants to put asses in the seats. He's going to want something to show for it. However, Sam Howell looks decent. And then you have like New York Giants, potentially, Las Vegas Raiders. And then even in the, the silly trades that we've talked about, like something like the Chargers, right? So there's, there's five teams that realistically are on your list. And you really only need one of them to fight. And the reason, yes, last year, you were saying like, oh, you had to go back to nine. Because that's how good the quarterback class was. Nobody was really chomping at the bit for Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud. So you had to go to nine to get two first-round picks, a second-round pick, and D.J. Moore. This year, you could slide back debatably two, three, or four slots and pick up more than you did sliding back eight last year. So that's where I disagree. I think this year the pick is so much more valuable. If you're somehow, some way, trading back 15 slots if you're going back all the way to like 14 or 10 i think it might be one of the largest draft day trades in nfl history it'll be like four first round picks plus a player and and i understand that but like looking at it right now the way it's set up right now is the the thing that's working for you real well here is pick two is going to washington pick three is going to the patriots pick four is going to the cardinals so like washington as nice as sam howell looks uh they'd take caleb williams over him for sure um oh, for sure and, you know, New England's also looking for a new quarterback. However, Arizona might not be. Arizona might go, we're taking Marvin Harrison Jr., pick four. As of today, Jonathan Gannon indisputably said that Kyler Murray is his franchise quarterback. Today, he said Correct. That. So that was where the Marvin Harrison Jr. argument was going. So right now, Marvin Harrison, if you don't take him, is probably going four. Correct, which only leaves you two possible suitors – to trade with if you still want Marvin Harrison Jr., right? So at the end of the day, if you truly want the Hall, you may not get Williams or Marvin Harrison Jr. if you want the Hall. I mean, you'll still get a good trade out of it. 
but I, I just don't think you can have both like people think you can. I find it incredibly entertaining that Ryan Poles has single-handedly somehow as a second year GM become the the guy that broke the league's brain. I don't think I've ever seen a con- a draft where it's been this misleading. It's always been that, you know what, teams have the pick that they pick. They may take a guy or they may not. And if somebody really wants a guy, they can come in and swoop in. It's probably not going to be that complicated. And if it is, then God bless Ryan Poles. And we have like the best GM in the NFL. Um, and then possibly Ian Cunningham leaving and you get two more third round picks. And it, it's a good situation to be in. It's an embarrassment of riches. But at the end of the day, it's just all going to come down to what does – Ryan Poles want to do about the quarterback situation. And last year it felt a little bit more obvious that it was, it was a bluff, right? Last year, Ryan Poles still had to say, Hey, we're still looking at the quarterback position. We always will. We always have to this year. I think just based on how the media is treating it, how Justin Fields is reacting, Justin Fields talking about how, you know, I've loved my time here at Chicago. I'll never miss a moment. And this might have been my last game at Soldier Field, and it was beautiful and this and that. Like, that hurts, man. I don't want that. I mean, it is a business, and I don't think you'd do that for any other position, but you do have to treat the quarterback position a little differently. Correct. But I'm talking more about trying to get Marvin Harrison Jr. And, and the reason why I'm talking about it is because I think even his value might be too high. Like, Listen, they talked about building this team the right way. I mean, I can remember a time when we would look at the Packers and go, wow, look at them. They're built through the draft completely. Like, all most of their guys are drafted, and they're having so much success with Rodgers and this and that. I think that's where we kind of want to get to. We want to sit here and have our draft picks and have our young guys sit there and progress and flourish. And you look at a guy like Jalen Carter, who, you know, was projected to potentially – be the top pick in last year's draft. And he fell and fell. And even when he fell to pick nine, they still wanted nothing to do with him. Marvin Harrison Jr. does not have any off-field concerns like Jalen Carter did, right? Listen, the guy's a, a legit prospect, right? I'm not taking anything away from him. He's worth the probably the second, third, or fourth overall pick, which is where he's going to go. He's going to go in the top five, right? However, for us... Is it better for us to sit there and maybe pick up a different wide receiver? Like trade back, get more, get a different wide receiver, get more picks, things like that. Because to to even spend that much on one guy, like I, I guess it all depends on what the offer is to move up two or three spots. If you could trade back to where New England is, pick three. I, I don't think Marvin Harrison Jr. is in any way worth the first overall pick. I'll put it that way. If you have that and nobody wants to take the bait and trade you, then I don't think – I mean, you have to take the player that you think is the most valuable for your team-building scenario. And whatever that may be for Ryan Poles, I don't know. But if let's play the hypothetical that nobody wants to trade for the first overall pick, I would be much more comfortable with Caleb Williams than Marvin Harrison as a first overall draft pick. Because the ceiling on a quarterback changing your entire team is much higher than one wide receiver changing your entire team. Look at the Vikings and Justin Jefferson. He's the best in the league. And really, unless there's some guy delivering him the ball, you can't do anything with that position on its own. In terms of your value at first overall, I, I'm i emotionally attached to Marvin Harrison because of the same reason that the Bears are attached to Marvin Harrison. DJ Moore was his childhood friend growing up. Uh, him and Justin Fields are close personal friends um, because of the Ohio State connection. And it would probably be a really awesome summer training camp and the interviews would be great. And it would be really fun to see them all gelling together and have fun. But um, there's plenty of talent in this draft that I would be okay with otherwise. I mean, we've talked about the draft a lot, even in our personal conversations. We've studied it one of the things that i'll tell you is that wide receiver is one of those positions that you can find guys that will produce for you all throughout the draft right whereas um defensive line an edge Mm -hmm. rusher or defensive tackle those guys tend to be taken in the first round first or second round so okay so what if you drop back to pick seven and you, you could still get the best defensive tackle out there 
Like yeah. that might be more of a value to Ryan Poles than sitting there taking a guy. I'm just uh, listen. I'm just trying to lay the scenario out there that it's it's possible we may not wind up with either Williams or Marvin Harrison Jr. It, it really is. A lot of people are saying you can't pass up on Marvin Harrison Jr. And in that case, you still have a second first round pick this year that's still pretty high. Um, so you might be willing to sit there and gamble with that pick if you only trade back a little bit and still get something in return and still get them. It might still be a win for you as, as an organization. I think it's a tougher spot than people make it out to be. I think everybody's just like, oh, you're getting a haul and this and that. And it depends on what you really want, I think. Because if you if you want Marvin Harrison Jr., I don't think you're getting this huge haul because you're only dropping back a couple spots. But it might be what you're saying. If Caleb Williams is projected to be that good, then I guess somebody may give up a lot to just move up. But usually it's desperate teams. Ryan Poles almost kind of put himself in this situation too with understanding that last year like you had the first overall pick and in your head you're saying hey you always have to take a quarterback in the first pick to kind of improve the overall potential of your team if anybody or gms are referencing the point of maybe you shouldn't make that trade they're probably referencing last year there's a lot of references to be made they're referencing trey lance and mitch trubisky and a lot of those guys but I think that's more in the past, and people are slowly but surely learning from that. And I think even last year, I think, you know, there were discussions with the Texans for moving up, but I think unless you got a team like the Panthers that had a bad owner and were willing to make that trade, I don't know if there was many other suitors out there that Ryan Poles could have gotten that kind of haul for. That's why I use the word desperate. Frank Wright got fired, right? But clearly, there was some desperation there to keep your job. So, okay, so we're going to sit there and we're going to gamble and we're going to toss whatever we have and try and get a quarterback and try and make this thing work, right? And if I can't do that, I'm probably getting fired. If I do it and it doesn't work, I'm probably getting fired. But but that's probably my best jo- uh, shot at keeping my job here, right? And so I think you have to find a team like that. You have to find somebody that's like that's desperate enough to give you the haul because they don't care about the future that much because their leash is very short. It's just always interesting that the potential of the future is always worth more than what you have right now. Right. And that's, it's fascinating where I would say like, if you said Justin Fields, how much are you getting for him? People are talking about a second or a third. And I think maybe you could get a first if there was like a really desperate, hungry team, but I highly doubt it. You're probably getting a second round pick for him. However, that's a first round pick and that's a good quarterback in this league. He's probably a top half quarterback in this league. And then you say, you know, you see a team like the Chargers and people have thrown around that the fun idea of the trade, right? Where it's the first overall pick, they take Caleb Williams to LA, you give him back to Chicago. I'd be very happy with that. But the idea that, the potential of Caleb Williams is worth more than Justin Herbert is insane to me. The idea of what Caleb Williams can be is more valuable than Justin Herbert. I've seen Justin Herbert. He is incredible. And then at the same time, if you trade the first overall pick and you don't get Justin Herbert and you have three back-end first-round picks, you could probably go get Justin Herbert in a year for two of those picks. Currently, right now in the NFL, if you if you just take the number away from the pick and replace it with a name, who is worth that haul right now, right? Like, if you were to trade this first overall pick for three first-round picks, like we're saying, who is worth three first-round picks in the NFL? I mean, Patrick Mahomes? Like, the list is short, you know? Yeah. Like, you might, you might be able to come up with two, three list. names. Yeah, and I think – Right. It's, it becomes a debate really quick, right? So, yeah, why wouldn't you do it? Like, for, for anybody to live up to that expectation is almost insane. When you look at it that way, I think it kind of paves a very clear path of, yeah, trading back is the smart way to go here. Um, Just based off value, which Ryan Poles talks about all the time. Let's hope he sticks to his guns and keeps kind of like preaching that value system and actually follows through because that's the ideal situation for all of us. 